It's a brand new week. This is going to be a special week. Why? Because we could eat this week. <laughs> Good girls gone rad. Scoot over that way. <laughs> That's too far. You bounced too far. Did you have one of those like where you held on to Mickey's ears and then the rest of it was a big bouncy ball? We had one of those big bouncy balls, but we didn't have Mickey Mouse. We had like whatever came from like the local five and dime store. Oh, I'm sorry. I had the Mickey Mouse and it was like a hard plastic. You could go all over the yard with that thing. You were special. I and mean, well, you are special, but not for that reason. <laughs> Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 99. 99? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 175 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So welcome to a brand new week. We are one episode away from 100. 100. I, I think we're going to have something it. special for 100. Well, we have to. I just don't know what it's going to be yet. So you're going to have to make sure you subscribe to the channel We're to find out. giving away our couch. <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> Who would want it? What couch? We stopped doing a couch a year ago. But I mean, our couch is so like, it's Nobody sad. wants our couch. It is a tired couch with like so many animals on it. Yeah. Like, well, it's not even our couch anymore. It's Tabitha's couch. It is right? Tabitha's and couch. And she claims them all. Whichever one you're sitting on, that's her couch. Get that's out. That's the one. Get out. Right? Get off the couch right now. That's my couch. Well, I'm going to go sit over there. No, no, no. That one's mine too, right? Yeah. She's a it's toddler. like the little kids, right? Yeah. If I saw it, it's mine. If I sat on it, it's mine. If I played with it, it's mine. She's like, you guys didn't sit out here for so long. I just claimed them all. Yeah. So it's a new week. And uh, today is February 1st, which means we get to eat. Later today, I will have an even bigger smile on than I do right now as we tape this on Saturday. <laughs> And we're still 48 hours Okay, out. but they're watching it on February 1st. Yes. And so we're actually vlogging today as well. Well, we're not vlogging today when we're filming. We're vlogging today when you're watching this, if you're watching it on the day it came out. And can I just say, it's February and I love you. Well, that's awesome. Well, I mean, I love you, but I love you. I love <laughs> you who is who are watching. February, uh -huh. we think about love. And actually, we have a love challenge. I was going to ask you, don't we have a challenge this month? We have a love challenge because sometimes getting our minds off of ourself is helpful. Mm -hmm. And I think that we don't spend enough time mending relationships, dealing with other people. You're going to feel good about yourself if you take the love challenge okay. that we're doing well, every day. Well, what is the love challenge? Every single day, we have a different challenge. Maybe it is you're going to write a card for somebody. Maybe you're going to forgive someone this okay. month. But if you take on the love challenge, I want to see what, you know, I'm going to post the, it in Instagram and on our Facebook group and then answer back. Tell me what you did with your love challenge so each day. every month, just like last month with the 31 reasons of why you do keto, you're going to post a love challenge every day yes. in our Facebook family group. So make sure you go sign up for our Facebook family group to see that. There's a link down below. Yeah. And uh, also put up what you're doing for the day. So that's really cool. I'm excited. And I'm also really happy that as soon as our 21 days of, of prayer and fasting were over, since I had already budgeted time every day to get up and get out the door to, to go to church, mm -hmm. I immediately, as soon as it was over, because it wasn't, I mean, we still had another week left right. in the month of January. I immediately was like, hey, I'm already disciplined to do something with this time. I'm going to immediately start exercising in that time. You're awesome. And I have been faithful every single day, except for except for Friday. We did later on, we did, um, I, I did exercise later, but every other day of the week, for this seven days, I got up at that time, that early time, and got out the door. And today, I did five miles. You're awesome. You did really good. Well, I got a yeah. present for you. Okay. Except for I left it in the car. But 
So I'm doing this like workout and, and this regimen which with Bronson, which now that I can actually start eating food, yeah. I'm gonna start documenting stuff and we're gonna make a couple of videos. I'm, I'm kind of splicing together for you guys like the first three weeks because one of the weeks we're missing all the video anyway. So, right. and we're really just kind of talking about getting going and stuff. So we're gonna do a little video of like what exactly I'm doing and then we're gonna start documenting a little bit. But one of the things Bronson was like, I, I'm doing like, at home workouts, nothing going to the gym. It's all like a lot of the stuff that was in the seven like day restart from Keto Chow, like doing right. burpees at home, using a couple of bands. But one of the things he was like, I need you to get some dumbbells, because I don't have any, and I need you to get a kettlebell, which is very difficult to find right now. Like we're still in, like you can't find any kind of exercise equipment. No. It's kind of weird. The, the store, st like the, the shelves are bare. If you need. If you need something like that, look on OfferUp. So I found a guy that was selling stuff, like he must have a warehouse. I actually found a couple people and I got it pretty cheap, but I got you a kettlebell so that you can like do really? some kettlebell stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'm actually excited. Now, how much does this thing weigh though? I bought you a 15 pound one. Like he said you should be starting, you should, your goal is to get to like a 25 to 30 pound one. So I Seriously? bought you a 15 pound one. So you can do squats and kettlebell swings and, and things like that, so. We're gonna do some of the videos for that kind of stuff. I'm actually excited about that. That should be fun. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be good. So we have a lot to talk about. Like I said, today we get to start eating. So we're vlogging while you guys are watching this and we've got a really cool dinner plan. We've got a lot of cool videos coming up. We're gonna be getting into a bunch of cooking videos. So again, yes. make sure you subscribe to the channel and you hit that bell notification um, because you're gonna to wanna to see these videos. They're really good. We're working on getting Anthony doing them. And uh, we actually have a giveaway going on right now. Yep. If you head over to the video from last week where we started, we showed you what was inside of the Keto Chow Club box. Yes. So this thing here, and uh, yeah, we opened up the box, showed you everything that's in here, and there's a new flavor in here. And I'm gonna tell you what it yeah, is now because it. by now everybody's gotten their box. The new flavor is peach, and I can tell you. Peaches and cream. Peaches and cream, yes. It's coming out this month. So like you're gonna be able to get some of that if you weren't able to get the Keto Chow box and our link will give you 10% off when it comes out. I don't have the exact date of when it's coming out, but I do know it is coming out later on this month. Uh, but we're giving this box away. This box is worth over a hundred dollars. We have not licked it. We haven't licked it, but no. it's our personal box. We're giving it away. We didn't take anything out of it. It's even got the recipe cards in it. So head over to the video. I'm gonna leave a link right here. Head over, watch the video for us because that's what really helps the channel. Hit mm -hmm. the like button on it. Gotta live in the United States. Live in the United States. And then leave a comment down below in that video and we're gonna draw the winner on our live stream this Thursday. But we also get to give something else away right now. Oh, you wanna do that right now? Yes. Okay, so we'll do that right now. So we have another thing to give away. We had ordered these the day that they announced them. Yeah. We ordered, we paid for this, we ordered yeah. it. And uh, I specifically ordered an extra one to give away. This is their new mug cake bundle. And uh, this is really cool. So you get this really thick mug. It's a really nice mug. It's really nice. It says, have your cake Double and keto. Thickness. It's got four packages of keto chow. Each one of these packages makes three mug cakes. Hello. And then there's four recipe cards. And the reason I chose this one is because you could make four different flavor mugs. Like you can buy these mug cakes where you can get all strawberry, all, what is it? All strawberry, all, all cookies, cookies and, and cream, cream all, all devil's food. Or chocolate. Or all, what is the, the fourth one? Birthday cake flavor. Yes. So you can buy it that way or you can buy it like this where you can get the variety because yeah. once you have the mug and the recipe card, you can make it over and over because all you gotta do is have the right flavor. Right. And so we're get, those recipes, by the way, are not available on their website. So the only way to get it right now is to buy the mug bundle. There's a link down below for that and our code will get you 10% off if you use that link. But we're gonna give this set away. Well, yes. not this set. We have another whole box That's that we haven't sealed. opened. We haven't even opened up the box. You wanna do that right now? Yes, please. Okay. We're gonna use pick a winner. Pick a winner. And here we go. Fetch. How many people wanna try it? Let's see. 133. 
And the winner is Julia Lothmer. Congratulations. She says, love your hair, Rachel. Would like to do Chow Club, but budget can't handle it every month. Can't wait to try the new flavors. Hope they start selling on the website soon. Well, good news, Julia. You are going to be able to get this on the website very soon. I'm not quite sure of what the date is. As soon as we know, we will let you guys know. And also, we will get a review video up of the new peaches and cream flavor. But she just needs to send us her address. Yeah, so send me all of your information to joe at twocrazyketos.com with all of your shipping information and we will get that box shipped right out to you. Congratulations. Now let's go ahead. We'll take a quick commercial break and then we'll get back with our comments and our questions from last week. I missed you. They didn't go anywhere. Well, it was, it felt like a long time. They had a couple of commercials where if they have YouTube premium, then they actually got to like see us for less than a second. Too long. Okay. This week, instead of having uh, an adjunct professor of the week, we actually have two um, our keto subscriber of the week. Yay! And now, if you're new to our channel, we have a Facebook family group. There's a link down below, and it's full of a community of over 4,000 people who are there to inspire you, to keep you motivated, to share recipes, deals, things like that. Make sure you go join it and share your story. Yes. Because your story is going to inspire someone. So this week, we actually have two of them. Yay! And the first one comes from Christy Davis. Hey, Christy! Christy said, after leaving the guard, I started IVF to get this little guy. I gained oh. 20 pounds during the IVF from the hormones and then another 30 pounds when I was pregnant. I love my little man, but losing any weight seemed impossible. So I started keto again after being off it since 2016. I'm now down 14 pounds since New Year's, still breastfeeding for a couple more months. And I'm not being too strict, but I'll take whatever loss I can get. Amen. When he turns one and goes to regular milk, I'll get really strict. I've got a long way to go, but I've got a good start. He is so handsome. Congratulations, Christy. Now, yes. hey, Christy, go take a look at Nisha Berry's videos. Yeah. As well as Mega from Keto Connect, because they both have breastfed on keto. Yeah. And might be able to give you a few tips for that. Now... I think this is awesome. Yes. But I have to admit, like Christy has been active in our like online, you know, chats every week mm -hmm. and in our Facebook group and leaving comments. And I thought it was one of the other Christy Davises. <laughs> Christy Davis is a very popular name. It is awesome. We have three Christy Davises and they're that. all awesome. I so mean, welcome to the family. Mom, you should have named me Christy Davis. I feel like I would have achieved more with my life. Okay, we have one more subscriber of the week and that is April. Hey, April. She says, hey guys, I started keto in March 2020 and lost 40 pounds, then switched to carnivore October 2020 and have lost 22 pounds more. I love raw eggs in my coffee, which is a miracle because I don't even eat eggs. This way of eating is so simple to me, and even though it may seem very restrictive, it seems like freedom to me. Yeah. I am still losing and hope to be at goal weight by this summer. I'm currently in a size 6 down from size 18. Everyone be blessed and have a great day. Check this out. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my gracious, you look gorgeous. Is that not what? awesome? I want her hair too. That red hair is so <laughs> lovely. Just absolutely lovely. Congratulations. Yeah, wow. Absolutely. You're doing great. And welcome to the family and just keep up the good work. Welcome to the Egg in the Coffee Club. Well, we're working on it for party, you too. Party of one. <laughs> okay, let's get into our comments from last week. And the first one is from Nan. Hey, Nan. Nan said, I can't believe Joe wants more chickens, but Rachel doesn't. Well, here's the thing. It's like, I love kids, but like kids are work. And every single time, like you have more pets, you have to divide your attention among the pets. Do you see how Tabitha reacts when one of the cats needs more lovin'? There's a simple solution to this. Okay. Chickens aren't pets. They're food. They're pets. They're food. Not the way we raise pets. They're food. They all need <laughs> hugs. That's why we had a we had one of the chickens this week came into the house and was headed right for my she shed because I hadn't gone outside to give huggies for the day and she was just not having it. Well, here's the thing. She had help because she got onto the patio, but Tabitha opened the door. She will just let them in. Come I've got some in. other people who agree with me though. Okay. So Brittany said, hey, Brittany. I second more chickens, Joe. The more, the merrier. The more the merrier. Well, here's the thing. 
there's no difference between five chickens and 10 chickens. There's just not, or six chickens. There's just no difference. Like you have to clean the poop for one, you have to clean the poop for 10. Well, I mean, that is true. And the way that we have the um, the coop set up, it's all in one place. Right. I really love the coop design mm -hmm. because it's just like There's where they There's plenty of water, plenty of food. I mean, it's just awesome. And it is easy to clean that all out, but it's the interaction. <laughs> You have to raise them. Well, Christopher said, hey, Christopher. there's always room for more chickens. Not only are eggs delicious, but so is chicken. And by the way, he sent the canned bacon. The canned bacon. I'm actually very excited about the canned bacon, although I don't know what it's gonna taste like right out of the can. I feel I like know. I feel like it will fry up in a, <laughs> in a delicious way, but out of the can, I feel like it's gonna be like soggy. Okay, well, enough about the chickens. I've proven my point. Everybody says we should get more chickens, so we need to get more chickens. Wow. Okay. Um, the next comment is from Deborah. Hey, Deborah. She says, Joe and Rachel, what do you think of Prove It products? What's your input on it? Because I want to start doing that or adding it to my keto lifestyle. What do you think? Okay. So Prove It products. Um, okay. Here's the thing. So Prove It products are exogenous ketones, and they are a little bit different than the companies like Perfect Keto and some of the other ones you're gonna find in the grocery stores and things like that. Most of them are actually made from a company called Go BHB, and then the personal company like Perfect Keto adds Changes different the flavors flavor. and stuff like that. Prove It's are a little bit different, but they're also three times the price. They come from a multi-level marketing company, and I don't have an issue with the multi-level marketing company aspect of it. Three times the price though. I have an issue with three times the price, and I have an issue with the way some of their distributors actually sell and market it and even the company because the company has a little cartoon on their website as well yeah but i've seen a lot of distributors market it and try to convince people to get it by saying that you can eat whatever you want and take these proven exogenous ketones and then get right back into ketosis which is technically true because ketosis is not like just your body creating ketones. Ketosis is where your body is utilizing ketones for energy. So I could technically eat a candy bar and then go take some proven ketones, check myself with a keto mojo and have ketones in my blood. But is it working? But is yes. doing anything? I'm not in nutritional ketosis. Right. I'm in ketosis because my body is using those proven ketones because it prefers that. But I'm not in nutritional ketosis, which means I'm not converting my fat or the fat that I'm eating to ketones. So it's not going to help you to lose more fat. You're simply going to have a little bit more energy and a little bit more focus. Yeah. I think you need to know why are you taking them? I mean, there's people who have brain injuries and they take them for, for that in response to that. And like, that is something that's necessary, mm -hmm. but when they market it, it's kind of like this. So Joe got a kettlebell and mm -hmm. I get a kettlebell. All right. So if Joe starts exercising with that kettlebell and then when it's my turn to exercise with my kettlebell, I just pay somebody else to exercise with the kettlebell. Right. Okay. Then at the end of the month, Joe's got muscles from him training with that kettlebell. Why would I be upset that I don't? Why would I be expecting that I should have muscles too. I paid for it. Right. I paid to have the muscles. Well, it doesn't work like that. Like yeah. I have to do the right thing and just continue doing it. No one can do that kind of work for you. So like the prove it that that, I mean, it's great. And there's, you know, if you're going to go exercise and you want extra energy, like it will give you a boost of energy, right. but it's not gonna do the keto right eating for you. Yeah, now, and that's the same for any exogenous ketone, yeah. okay? It's not just a proven thing. My biggest thing with proven is how they market it as well as the cost, but exogenous ketones have a place for you. The place is they're gonna give you a little bit of energy and they're going to give you a little bit more focus, you know, maybe a little bit more mental clarity for a short period of time, like a half hour but they're not going to help you lose any fat. So if you're thinking that if I take these, it's gonna help me lose more weight, no. they won't. Even on the Perfect Keto website, it says that. There's one way, and anybody who tells you that taking exogenous ketones are gonna help you lose weight faster, they're either lying or they're yeah. misinformed. Right. Um, the only way that ketones or exogenous ketones are gonna help you to lose more weight faster is if you take them right before a workout, a high intensity workout, 
and they're gonna give you a little bit more energy so that maybe you could work Go out harder. harder or longer. But that's it. They're not gonna make you burn more fat like by giving you more ketones. So honestly, unless you're trying to get more brain focus or something like that, I would not bother wasting your money on it. You could use C8. Well, that's the thing, yeah. If you really want, you can get the same result by taking about a half a tablespoon of C8 MCT oil, and you're gonna get those quick high ketones it's gonna give you more mental clarity, it's gonna give you more focus, it's gonna give you a little bit more energy. It lasts longer. And it lasts probably about two hours as opposed to the 30 minutes. So just something to think about. But again, if you don't want to spend the money on Prove It, you can use Perfect Keto ones, we have a link down below, or you can use any other company. It doesn't have to be Perfect Keto. I would just steer away from Prove It. I know we're gonna get a bunch of hate comments down below, but I'm we, we, we're gonna be honest with you. Yeah, and you may not need that product at all, That's no right. matter who's selling it. That's right. Okay, so next one is from Renee. Hey, Renee. Renee said, I got caught up in the various bars when I first started low carb keto, but it had a place then to get me away from the worst options. It was like a stepping stone as I learned more about making my own food and better choices. And heck, I'm still evolving and learning after years of this way of eating. I have you guys to thank for opening my eyes to so much more. Well, Renee, thank you for saying that. That was like super nice. We love you so much. Um, and we're experiencing the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you continue going through it, you know, and different seasons of the year, right. you'll probably eat more bars right now as you go into lacrosse season right. than you have, you know, in the last couple of months because we've been home and, you know, the RV food that we eat is different than we eat when we're making our lunches here at home. Yeah, two things that, that kind of stood out to me when I was reading that. First, she talked about it was a stepping stone. Yeah. And that's why people message us all the time, like, why do you talk about like keto bars or keto cookies or, you know, keto hot chocolates when like it's not the greatest thing? Because it's a stepping stone. Yeah. And my personal belief, and you may, some people may feel differently. My thing is, is if those products aren't there, there's a lot of people that won't even take a look at this lifestyle. If yeah. you start going, well, I could never have a candy bar again, and I could never have a piece of like, you know, chocolate. bread again, mm -hmm. like because you can have keto bread or a piece of chocolate, or I want some hot chocolate once in a while, they won't even look at it. But if they realize there are keto options, they could use that to kind of transition themselves into eating more whole foods in the outer aisle. And eventually you really won't even need any of that stuff, but it's a good stepping stone into this way of eating. Yeah. The other thing that she pointed out is that she's still on a journey. She's still learning, right? Us too. And we're always learning. And I'm glad that you're recognizing that this journey is, there's no end in sight, right? No. You're always going to be learning things, adapting things, Tweaking. figuring out how your body works. So keep up the good work, Renee. Uh, next one is from Robin. Hey, Robin. She says, I have overcome snacking. Yeah, so last week we actually asked, awesome. what have you overcome since getting started on keto? That's, and that's a big one. That is so stinking exciting. Yeah. I love that. Okay, next one is from Daphne. Hey, Daphne. Daphne said, I've never liked Brussels sprouts. My mom would always make them for my kids, but I wouldn't eat them. I saw Christy Davis fry hers up in bacon grease yes. and then melt Parmesan cheese on it. Now it's my go-to vegetable. It was something that we ate at Christmas. It was like, I mean, well, we had it for Thanksgiving and then we had it for Christmas because it was so popular. And that was, we chopped it up, put it on the Blackstone, mm -hmm. fried it up in bacon grease and with little, you know, chunks of bacon through it. And oh my yeah. gracious. I've always loved Brussels sprouts and so has Rachel, but most of the family has not. Whole nother level. And I started cutting, I was, I've been cooking them in bacon grease since like the beginning of keto. And they're just so delicious, especially if you let them get like that little bit of a crisp and burnt like on the outside. Yes. They're delicious. So good. Next one is from Sandra. Hey, Sandra. She says, since I've been on keto, I've quit drinking sweet tea, which is a miracle. I hear That's you. Because awesome. that was a hard thing for me too. I don't even crave it. So far, I've lost 35 pounds and I'm at my goal weight. But like y'all said, I need a next goal. So it is going to be getting rid of my flabby arms. If anyone has any suggestions, please let me know. Well, first of all, congratulations. Yeah. That is awesome that you got to your goal. And I think especially like, oh my goodness, it, being a Southerner and working sweet tea out of your life. Right. Right. It was like syrup. I mean, we used to make our sweet tea where you could stand a spoon in it. I mean, it was like its own food group. So I think that is a huge victory. 
but yeah, I love that she's going on to what's the next challenge. Yeah, because we talked about that last week. Is again, there's always something new. Like when you get to your goal, you have to find a new goal. Because yeah. Because as soon as you say like, well, I've reached my goal now. What? It's like I don't believe in maintenance. Like you're never maintaining. You're either losing or you're gaining or you're working on something else. Because if you get to your goal and you say like, I'm done. Now what are you going to do? Yeah. You get stagnant Go and then you start getting lazy and the next thing you know, you're yeah. going backwards. Do you have any suggestions for her arms? Resistance bands. Okay. Those things will beat your behind. Especially like working your triceps, things like that. And then Rachel also likes to wear like tighter shirts yeah. and stuff like that. It because helps. Because it kind of like moves things around a little bit. It does. The compression. Okay, next one is from Heavenly Homemaker. What a cute name. Said, I just started with raw egg in my coffee last week and I love it. Funny thing is, I won't even eat cooked eggs. Never thought it would be good and took a lot of nerve for me to do it, but I am so glad I did because I've been able to give up heavy whipping cream and do the egg instead. And that is stinking awesome. That is amazing. Because you're getting so much more benefit out of the egg than you are the heavy whipping cream. And it is doing what we want to see heavy whipping cream do in our coffee, which right. is we want it to make it creamy and we want it to lighten it up, take off that, you know, knock off that bitterness if right. you don't like the bitterness. Um, and it does that. Yeah, because especially when you put it with a blender, that egg emulsifies. So now you're getting the protein from the egg. Frothy. You're getting all of the vitamins and the nutrients from the egg yolk. And it's just, I mean, an egg is a perfect food. It, it is the perfect food. It's, it's perfect keto ratios. Everything about an egg is awesome. And it's inexpensive. That's right. Heavy whipping cream, let's be honest, like it can get ex pricey. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Cindy. Hey, Cindy. Cindy said, one huge thing that has changed since I've been keto is we don't go out to eat much. Yep. We used to eat out probably more than we ate at home. Now I enjoy preparing my own food and I know exactly what's in it. I totally hear you. So we do T-Mobile Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. And so mom is also on T-Mobile. And so me, her and I went out together because the grandkids were coming over and they enjoy bunless Whoppers. And so we were just going to go get like each of us get a cup of coffee and right. then give them our the bunless Whopper. So she goes and as they're handing it to her, she's like, I have not been out to eat in so long. What is this rinky dink portion that they are giving me? And a Whopper is not cheap no, normally. No, except for with T-Mobile Tuesdays where it's free. Yeah. So yeah, we used to eat out constantly. I mean, Rachel and I, I would say... Not exaggerating, we probably ate out four to five days a week pre-keto. Yeah. And now we don't. We go out to eat for two places. Unless we're on a trip. And even now, because we're in the RV, we cook everything ourselves. We don't really go out to eat. We go to two places. We get Buffalo Wild Wings on Tuesdays because it's buy one, get one free. And I can't make wings at home for what they sell them for when they're buy one, get one free. Right. And then we go out to Texas Roadhouse for the prime rib. Because again, I can't make the prime rib for what they're selling it for, especially because to make it right, it's going to take you 24 to 48 hours. And so we just choose to do that. Other than that, I like eating at home. I know what's in our food. And the bottom line is it's cheaper. Well, here's the thing. So we should probably do a funny video where you like have to go to the store and wait in the drive through line because mm -hmm. that is, I mean, you're still stuck there waiting for it to happen. And that was the funny thing too. When we went to go get the Whopper, my mom's like, oh my gosh, we could have like killed the cow and right. like, you know, carved it up by the time we're actually getting our food. And it does not take me long to fry up a piece of bologna, a fried egg, gr ground beef, right. a hot dog, like... I can do a lot of things very fast. Especially if you have a Blackstone. It's literally See? turn it on and come back out and throw and it on there and done. you're done. Fry a piece of cheese. So it's not really saving me time either. Right. right. So let's go ahead and take another quick commercial break and then we'll come back with our Facebook comments. Yay. What are you doing? Peekaboo. You're such a child. 
<laughs> okay, so now we have our ones from our Facebook family group. And again, if you're not a member of our Facebook family group, join there's it. a link down below. It's free. Go join it. There's also a link for our Discord. There's always people on there talking, as well as for our Patreon if you want to help support the channel. Come on down. Okay, so the first one is from Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Lisa said, now this was a meme, but I typed it out so that you can see our faces instead of the meme. And it says, I bet the reason it's called almond milk is because no one could ever say nut juice and keep a straight face. Yes. No. Now it is, I, I no, even put this it up is there. no longer almond milk. Leave down in the comments down below who is with me. I am no longer talking about almond milk anymore. It is now nut juice forever. Nut juice. Okay. There was one more Thank meme you, on there. One more meme. Okay. Okay. This one comes from Francine. Hey, Francine. And she said, why do cooking take like six hours, eating take like three seconds, Serious. and washing dishes take seven days and seven nights? Wow. this That one was made for my mom because for real. Like, especially if you are like me or my mom who has to dirty 15 pots to make one meal, no matter what we're making. It's like, we'll just boil water to just have another pot on the stove like yes truth okay next comment is from susan hey susan she said i love the topic of tonight's live p.s i love when there is a theme to the conversation good news we're gonna start doing that Me every week too i love that too such memories of horrible diets from the past thank goodness for keto absolutely life-changing so many people say to me keto is too hard i'm like no not at all in my opinion I have done hard diets and this is not one of them. The hardest diet I ever did was Michael Thurman's six week body makeover. It was from The Biggest Loser. The diet worked, but it was so hard. Six mini meals per day, no fat and no sodium. Two ounces of protein and a tiny amount of carbs at each meal. Every meal had to be prepped ahead of time because it was impossible to eat anything else and it required constant Willpower. Now oh she my actually gosh. put up a couple pictures to kind of for blast from the past. Oh, there's the AIDS <laughs> and extra strength. You remember the extra strength de dexatrin? I never took AIDS before, but I did take the dexatrin. I did the AIDS. I actually think I did both. So here's the thing: like even with that diet and with any diet, and we talked about it on Thursday. Now again, we live stream every Thursday at 8:30 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard Eastern. Time. So make sure you hit that bell icon down below so that you're notified when we go live because sometimes we just kind of spontaneously go live as right. well. Um, we talked about no matter what diet, even keto, right? If you're looking at it as a diet instead yes. of a lifestyle change, none of it is sustainable, okay? None of it is sustainable. And the second you go off, you will gain weight. Why? Because it's impossible, right? Right. What makes keto sustainable is because you make it a lifestyle. You change the metabolism of your body. You change your, your body from burning uh, carbohydrates to burning you know, your fat. But it also is a mindset change. Yeah. So if you're looking at it like short term and as soon as I'm done eating keto, like I'm going back to the way I ate before, you're going to gain weight. And it's just easier here because you get to eat such delicious food and so much of it. Well, and it's, I think it is very easy to get into the mindset of, I eat whole food. Yeah. I eat whole food and I don't eat a bunch of carbohydrate food. So eating meat and eating cruciferous vegetables or vegetables that tend to be on like the much lower carbohydrate vegetables like, what is easier than that? Right. I mean, honestly, what right. is easier than just, like, I don't eat junk? Yeah. So many people say it's restrictive. I find this the least restrictive thing that I've ever done as far as an eating lifestyle. You can always find something. Okay, next one is from Tony. Hey, Tony. Um, they say, I set out to jog three miles this morning. When I hit the two and a half mile mark, I was really tired and not at the time I wanted. So why not just walk the rest of the way? 2.5 miles is good enough, right? I remember Joe and Rachel talking about close enough. I kept going all the way to three. No 2.5 miles is not close enough i love that and, and i have to tell you like i will be honest like i said to rachel yesterday like she was like we had to go to Publix, and she was like can we go to Publix?" i'm like no we're going to aldi's instead and she's like why are we going to aldi instead and i'm like because if we go to Publix, we've got to walk past their little like fresh deli place and yeah. they've got these wings we like called mardi, mardi gras Rub. wings and i'm like i don't want to look at them she's like you can't eat them yet it's yeah. not monday and i'm like 
we're close enough. Like if I walk past those, there's a chance I might want to just say close enough. But she's like, nope, we're not close enough. We have to get all the way to the end. But I like what you're saying with that because if you're in a season where like close enough is a danger for you, then let's do that. Let's drive further or avoid someplace or do something where if you're vulnerable to a close enough scenario, maybe it's like in the in like in the day and mm -hmm. you're like, I want to cut off my eating at a certain time. If you're in a close enough danger zone, then let's do something else. Let's switch it up and like take yourself out of that because then you will feel defeated. And here you you actually did it all the way through. And right. that is awesome. And yeah. you feel good about yourself. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Matreya. Hey, Matreya. Said, I am so grossed out. I saw a friend post and then verified that it wasn't a joke. Kraft has released a Valentine's macaroni and cheese. Oh, wow. There is a second packet that is pink and adds a sweet candy flavor to the regular Wait, cheese flavor. What? Why? Even not being keto, I have to question this. I'm not trying to be a food snob, but I guess I am when it ventures into some areas. Who is their Chef Boyardee right now? Is it Will Ferrell from Elf? Because like, <laughs> didn't he add some sort of sugar element to whatever it was like spaghetti and maple syrup? Like, what is the thought process with that? We go to the store and again, we don't even grocery shop that often because we have mostly meat, you know, we get a few vegetables and stuff like that. That is so and gross sounding though. You walk through Walmart especially and we've seen so many things. The cereal aisle. The cereals. I feel like, like is the worst. Sour Patch Kids cereal. I mean it's like I don't understand where they're thinking of it but this is one of the reasons Ugh. that I really have a hard time buying anything from any of these companies even when they really do put good keto ingredients in it. Like I really try to stick to buying like any type of like packaged food like keto packaged food from somebody within like, you know, this community like Keto Chow or Keto Bars or Keto Brick or something like that because they know what it's supposed to be in there but also they do this lifestyle as opposed to Kraft or somebody, and I know this wasn't a keto product but no. they're making keto products, they're making cereals and I just have a really hard time with giving them my money when they're just trying to take advantage of people who are within the community. Well, and I feel like they are close enough. Yeah. Like, you know, we started product reviews because of Kraft, because of Hellman's, because they were making an avocado mayo. Right. But then they were adding other oils into it and I felt very portrayed, but the, I, I'm sure in their mind, they're like, well, close enough. We have some avocado <laughs> in it. It's better than it used to be. Like, close enough. So it's like, no, it's not, not the same thing. Yeah. Uh, next one is uh, from Jeannie. Hey Jeannie, she says, non-scale victory, I watched your video on products you no longer use and it made me realize a non-scale victory I hadn't even thought about. Our insurance gives my husband and I each $60 per quarter to purchase over-the-counter products from CVS. That's an average of $40 a month. I excitedly started looking through the shopping website and much to my surprise, it was difficult to find anything to buy. We no longer take over-the-counter meds. No antacid, no Aleve, no cold meds. No longer need a knee brace or our canes or a grab bar for the bathtub. Wow. I have a hard time finding anything to purchase. I finally got a new shower head and a blood pressure monitor since mine was so old, but what am I going to buy next quarter? I'll have $120 to spend and thanks to keto, I don't need anything. Wow. I mean, when you say, this is hard. Right. When you say like, I want to be able to eat macaroni and cheese with sweet tarts mixed in. And I feel like it's very unfair if I don't eat to eat this garbage. Think about this. Think about a future that even as you age, even if you're my mom's age, even if you're 80 years old, you are not going to need medicine to help fix headaches and joint aches and dandruff and like all of these things. Man, talk about an insurance policy on your future. It's what you're eating right now. Yeah. 
I am like so happy for you. That is awesome. It's really awesome. I will tell you what you can go use for. Go get like some toothpaste and Q-tip. That's oh, what we've go. done with ours. Is yeah. Just things that you, you need anyway, like deodorant wow. and stuff like that. What Let's a victory. do this. So because you're crying. <laughs> I know. You're saying you're happy, but you're crying. Let's take a quick commercial break so you can like fix your eyes. Yes. And then we'll come right back with the last couple of comments. Okay, so as Anthony says, I've got my stuff together in a sack. I get it all together. All right. <laughs> okay. Next one is from Sojourn. Hey, Sojourn. Said, I have a question I'd like some opinions on. I'm doing three shakes a day. I'm assuming keto chow starting today. Um, I'm bad at wanting a snack late before bed. Will I still lose weight if I wait for a third shake around 9 p.m.? Thanks for any info. Okay, this is going to be an unpopular opinion, but. You're fine, okay? <laughs> so many people are like, oh, you can't eat like up until six hours before bed. What's more important is having that like more extended period between your last meal of the day and your first meal of the next day. Now, I'm not saying that you have to intermittent fast if you're not intermittent fasting. Like I'm not saying you have to go all the way till one o'clock the next day. But if your last meal is normally at six o'clock and your first meal is normally at six in the morning, which is what about average people like that 12, that's what breakfast is, like right? break fast. Um, maybe have your first last shake at nine o'clock at night, but in your first shake at nine the next morning or eight the next morning. So if you're fine to extend it and then like just extend the morning by an hour or two, uh, the biggest thing I have with eating late, and we there's plenty of times where we don't eat till yeah. 10, 11 o'clock at night. Schedule and just we've happens. had no issues with weight increase or any kind of plateaus. Our, our plateaus and weight increase come from like stupid stuff, not eating late. Um, the only issue that I ever have with it personally is sometimes if I eat late, especially a high fat meal, I like get so much energy I can't go to bed. Yeah, that can that can be a side effect that that would be negative. But here's the thing. You're starting this. Mm -hmm. It goes back to Renee. It's a stepping stone. Right. So that like let's start. What we want you to do is be able to be successful in what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to eat three shakes and that's what you're trying to do, then let's spread it out where you will be successful right. at achieving that first goal. And then as you move along in your journey, then we will add layers of extending hours and you know all of those different things. But don't try to do it all and be like a four or five, a 10 year keto veteran right. your first you know week. Yeah, I mean, and again, it doesn't even have to be a keto shake. It could be your regular meal. Rachel and I are very different. Rachel and I is perfectly happy having her last meal at four o'clock and then waiting till the next day. Yeah. Me, I want to eat at night. I'm a night owl. I'm a person who will stay up till one or two in the morning. So if I have my last meal at four o'clock, I am going to start like sneak eating, walking past, doing drive-bys in the refrigerator. So I have to extend my last meal till like seven or eight o'clock because otherwise I'm going to snack all night long. Everybody is different yeah. and just do what works for you. Now, if you have a hard time going from that last meal to the next morning, increase your fat a little bit in your last meal because that will help satiate you over the night. Protein right. will satiate you right away, like in that meal. Fat will help sustain you. So you maybe cut back fat in the morning or in the afternoon and add it to your night one to get you through the night. You just have to keep experimenting with yourself. Yeah. So we have one more and that one is from Blaine. Hey Blaine, they say I've been struggling, my friends. My first year on keto, I lost 100 pounds. I kept it off for a year. The last several months, I've gained about 30 of it back. I'm having, I'm finding it hard to stay keto this time around. Any suggestions? Okay. We've all had this issue. Like, let's face it, 2020 sucked. <laughs> it really sucked. It, right? It just sucked. And I think that- All around suckage. The biggest problem, aside from maybe being stuck at home and snacking a little bit more, I think that the reason so many people, including ourselves, put some weight on, stress. even if you were doing the right thing, was stress. Worry. Right? Stress, you could be eating perfectly, but if you're stressed, you're gonna start gaining weight because it just messes with your hormones. So yeah. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Just, you know, like really work on, you know, like getting back on track, maybe start eliminating things. What we find when we're having a hard time kind of getting ourselves into the right routine again is do a week long like challenge or elimination kind of thing. Like 
here's the thing, something like an egg fast or a beef and butter fast or a carnivore week or a keto chow week, there's nothing magical about them. What makes them awesome is they help you reset because you're right. telling yourself, I can only have this, Yeah, that's it. So what you're in essence doing is eliminating everything else. Then you come back from that week, even if you haven't lost any weight, it's kind of taken everything off the plate and now you can reset yourself and kind of get back into the proper eating. Well, and it also gives you something to look forward to, something to be jovial about, something like that you're excited, maybe you're gonna go and try to come up with some different recipes. Part of 2020 was the uncertainty of it all and us thinking it, you almost felt like you wanted to do YOLO, like right. you only live once and like right. maybe tomorrow's never gonna come. And right. so I know what I have in my hand right now, whether it's something I don't, I don't wanna be eating, but at least, hey, I don't know what tomorrow will bring, maybe it's gonna get worse, so I'm gonna get what I wanna have right this second. Right. And instead, having a challenge like that for yourself is saying like, I'm planning on this week being something to look forward to and we're gonna be kind of lighthearted about it and you know, taking your focus off of the stress and the momentary satisfaction of just, you know, not planning for the future and being stressed out and right. just brings it back to like, hey, we're supposed to enjoy what we eat and have some fun with us. Yeah, and I would say make it a game. Don't even call it a challenge. Like yeah. call it a game. Give yeah. yourself a little reward sticker or something like for each day you get through it or say like, hey, next week for each day that I made it, I get, I don't know, something, an extra egg with my meal, whatever happens to, you know, that you like or something like that or buy a shirt or something. Just make it a game. So that's going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. And make sure you join us next week for episode 100, 100, where we will definitely have some kind of special giveaway since we do have, we will be celebrating 100 episodes. Yay. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, there are obviously 98 more Keto on the Couches, and I will leave a link for all of them right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you can find right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel, click the little bell icon. That way, for the next 100 videos, you'll be alerted to them. Until next time, bye. bye.